I want to settle this debate once and for all. Tor versus a VPN. Which one is definitively better? Some of you already know the answer, but given the recent Armageddon of VPN ads and sponsorship deals all over the internet, I feel it is my duty to abuse the f out of the YouTube algorithm and let everybody know what the hell is going on. VPN or Tor? Virtual private network? <laughs> or the Onion router. Both of these tools are marketed to people looking for better privacy and anonymity. But only one of them does the job right, and the other one was invented for a completely different purpose. In this definitive video comparison, we look at all the important technical and conceptual aspects behind Tor and VPNs. By the end of this video, you will better understand which technology is better suited for which purpose. So let's get into this. Anonymity, the first marketing point of most consumer-grade VPNs as well as Tor. Both of them are effectively shielding your true IP address and giving you a new one that supposedly can't be linked back to your true location. VPNs do this by rerouting your connection through a single relay, also known as Hop. This relay is a server that, in best case scenario, is owned by the VPN provider itself, and the more usual scenario is just a rented space on some other company's server. Most providers give you the option of multiple hops, but this is not a standard, nor does it improve the anonymity in any way, and here is why. Your VPN provider acts as your entry and exit node. They know your true IP address, and they know what websites you visit. If they want to, they can log this activity at any time. If they are required by law enforcement, they can hand over all your browsing data to them. Because many VPN services are paid, they have a money trail that leads straight to your bank account or credit card. And most cryptocurrencies aren't anonymous anyway. Even worse for most VPNs, signing up requires providing some personal information such as your email, account name and password. These identifiers are forever tied to your browsing activity while using the VPN service. On the contrary, Tor by default reroutes your traffic through three relays. Each one of the relays is operated independently and is chosen at random. While only VPN providers can create new hops, anybody can run relay on Tor network. The benefit is that no single relay knows the full traffic. They only know the nearest entry and exit points. The random choice of these hops makes it very difficult for a single actor to operate more than one hop in your Tor circuit. And to mitigate that, Tor automatically creates a new random circuit with a completely new set of relays each time you restart Tor network roughly every 10 minutes. So connecting to a malicious exit node doesn't compromise your security in the long run. This makes persistent tracking on Tor prohibitively costly and it renders mass surveillance uneconomical. The only successful way for the law enforcement to compromise a Tor user would be to correlate timings between their entry and exit connections. This is a lot of guesswork that requires precise targeting and loads of resources to be able to collect the data at both ends of the connection. This can be done en masse with current technology and only global adversaries such as the NSA or GCHQ have the capacity to successfully target Tor users because they already monitor the entire internet traffic. If done right, Tor can be used to escape even these targeted attacks, but such option is simply not possible with any VPN provider. So the anonymity goes without any doubt to Tor. Privacy is a different concept than anonymity. While anonymity shields your identity, privacy hides your activity. Many regular people that choose VPNs do so to prevent their ISPs from spying on their browsing history and selling it to advertisers. What they don't realize is that they are not enhancing their privacy, they are just delegating the trust to a different company. Many VPN providers have been caught making money off of selling people's browsing records, but there are some reputable providers that don't do that. However, that doesn't guarantee your ISP still can't track your browsing history. Internet is just a network of networks, and the only way it works globally is because these networks are willing to give each other access into each other's network through peering or transit connections or at places called internet exchange points. 
If your ISP meets with your VPN server on a peer network or an internet exchange point, they can see what websites you are visiting from that VPN server. As a matter of fact, anybody within the reach of these points can do that. Tor, on the other hand, is made to avoid building circuits within the same peer networks or internet exchange points. That means when Tor reroutes your packets through three relays, it is traveling on three independent networks that don't talk to each other and don't exchange each other's data. This successfully mitigates the threat of adversaries like your ISP trying to snitch your browsing activity at remote servers. This privacy is taken by Tor. Security Ok, but what about security? VPNs are all about encryption. They encrypt your data. That's true. But what's also true is that encryption has to be supported at both ends in order to work. And VPNs encrypt your traffic on your device and decrypt it on the server that they control. That means your traffic leaves your VPN network without the VPN encryption. Consumer-grade VPNs are not self-sustained overlay networks. They are basically just tunnels that transfer your traffic to a different place before it enters the internet. Tor does the same, but just about three times better. Tor encrypts your traffic three times, once for each relay, to individually prevent relay operators from eavesdropping on your traffic. Much like with VPNs, once your traffic leaves Tor exit node, it enters the internet unencrypted. However, Tor is more than that. It's an overlay network, which means Tor can host Onion websites. These Onion websites are part of the Tor encryption, so if you are using Tor to access Onion servers, your entire traffic, from the moment your device initiates the connection, all the way through to the encrypted Onion server, is fully encrypted and hidden from the clear internet. You can't do that with consumer VPNs, and so Tor wins this round again. Trust yeah, but if anyone can run their relay on a Tor network, this means bad guys and the government can also run them. Which means they can monitor what I do. And you'd be correct. Tor is completely free and open source. Anyone can run it and anyone can try to abuse it. But that's the only way to achieve anonymity. If only a small group of people used Tor, it would be easy to identify them. The more people use Tor, the stronger everybody's anonymity gets. This is why Tor uses what is called a trustless design. As a user of Tor, you are not required to trust any single provider. You can always reroute your traffic at any time. Relay operators acquire no personal data from you, and no provider can choose to serve a node specifically for you. Users have the ultimate power. Tor project is a non-profit. Its code is released as a free software, which means it is open and without any copyright restrictions. There is no central authority in control of Tor. Almost everything is the exact opposite with VPNs. They are centrally owned by a single company, they are the ones that choose which servers you can select, and you have to trust them with your data. If they promise you not to keep any locks or not to sell your data, it's just a promise that you'll never be able to verify or hold them accountable for. Your VPN provider is in control of your traffic at all times. On the internet, the only trustworthy system is the one you don't have to trust at all. Tor is a clear winner of this category. Ease of use Tor is not difficult to learn, but it does require some learning. The easiest way to use Tor is to get the Tor browser. There's a version for all desktop operating systems and one official version for Android. This is only useful for browsing. Using Tor with other applications and programs requires a little bit of familiarity with configuration and settings. Tor can be run system-wide, but this can lead to errors that can de-anonymize you. The most stable way to use Tor on your system is to get Tails or Hunix. Both of these require experience with booting live operating systems and troubleshooting problems with some potential hardware and machine-specific limitations. It can be done, it's just not for your soccer mom. Most VPNs usually come with user-friendly apps with nice UI design, with big buttons and pleasant color palettes. It is, after all, made by companies that want to make money and not to build the most secure system possible. They can be used with virtually no user interaction via mobile apps or desktop clients. 
VPN apps immediately secure all network traffic on the device without any further configuration for individual apps. VPNs are business and businesses require happy customers. Ease of use is the domain of VPN providers. Price. There are free VPNs and there are paid VPNs. Tor comes free by default. There is no paid version. With free VPNs, you pay with their data. Tor doesn't have this problem because there is no market for anonymized data from the Tor network. So the price of VPN is either your data or your money, or both. The price of Tor is sometimes your patience. Censorship resistance. A lot of websites are blocking connections coming from Tor and they're usually more permissive of VPN connections. Some countries block Tor and, and VPN networks altogether. However, Tor easily circumvents this censorship with Tor bridges, hidden entry relays that make it look like you are connecting to a regular internet. If using a VPN is prohibited in your country, there is not much you can do to hide the fact that you are using one. So Tor wins at the entry point and VPNs win at the exit point. Not due to technical superiority, but simply because websites are more willing to accept VPN users since they are much more easily identifiable. So this round is split even. Speed. There is no question, three hops are always gonna be slower than a single hop. That's why most VPNs are faster than Tor in most cases. Conclusion. Tor easily obliterates virtual private networks at almost all categories. And even user-friendliness where VPNs prevail is not a big issue because Tor can be learned if necessary. Overall, if you're looking for a strong anonymity, privacy, security, and ways to circumvent censorship and do all of this for free, Tor is your only solution. VPNs are useful for accessing geolocation restricted content and they're generally faster than Tor simply due to them sacrificing stronger anonymity and security. And that's the end of this video that I hope will settle the debate Tor versus VPN forever. If you like this content, please help me live by supporting my channel on Patreon. And if you don't want to support this channel monetarily, please engage in liking and commenting underneath this video. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.